Hello, beautiful souls. How are you? It is September 30th, 2024, and there is a lot going on. I'm going to give you the video today that I intended to do the other day when Source and Poppy and Hathor said, no, you're going to reintroduce yourself to your viewers. So I also am well aware of many um, changes taking place. And I'm going to speak on that just for a minute. We have been guided, many of us on this mission, by our spirit teams, which mostly comprise of Ascendant Masters and Archangels, that there would be, now this initially came to me two, two years ago, there would be cataclysmic changes weather related cataclysmic changes that drastically change the topography of our planet it's necessary it's also very very difficult to watch but i want to give you a different perspective because the controllers that were absolutely love for us to be in a fear state and that is not beneficial for us to be in a fear state and you may be saying but this is scary times it's only scary if you lack faith or if you don't have the faith to really see the bigger picture yes there is death yes there is flooding yes there is fire Yes, there are earthquakes, but also, yes, this is the first time a population of people on a planet has been alive to ascend with the planet. It has to happen this way. There are things about lower timeline earth, which I will call old earth, that are not for us. They are the consequences of lower timeline choices and actions made for the population by very nefarious beings. It doesn't get any better. It will continue to decay until old earth, the lower timeline earth, implodes. And for some, that is their soul contract. For some, they don't have a soul, they're NPCs, and that's where they're meant to be. For some, they are organic portals, they have a micro soul, and that is where they're meant to be. As much as I love putting forth love and forgiveness and positive energy to all of humanity, it is not all of humanity as a populace that ascends by choice. By choice there's not really a governing body that is saying you get to and you don't beings have choices unless they're created in a bio lab then they are programmed and that is a real thing so i thought i would get a little message from the cosmos today so we will start this video with a bit of a message, a message that I do intend to be honest, highest and best good for the collective. So message from the cosmos, highest and best good for the collective. What is it? What is the message that benefits them in this now moment? Little split. What has your inner voice been asking of you? Listen and act. What has your inner voice been asking of you? Listen and act. It's kind of hard to see the bottom part. It says listen and act down here. The truth has been out there all along. There's so many that say, where's disclosure? Where's disclosure? Where's disclosure? Well, it's there. But if you don't want to hear it or you don't like what the truth actually is, it's not for you yet. Maybe it's not for you at all. 
maybe you're one of those beings that's meant to be in the lower timeline because that's what you chose before you ever got here. But I want to give you this. There's a lot of connections to old souls and uh, depending on the agenda of the being talking about them, they talk about their negative effects from certain lives, but they don't speak about it as if that energy body has the ability to have a positive polarity life. And they do. We all do. And we all did. That's part of our soul evolution. So in the life that I incarnated with the being known as Poseidon, he also incarnated with, we incarnated together life after life after life. A lot of us did. There were many times that we were in negative polarity lives. For example, he was King Solomon and I was King Hiram of Tyr in that lifetime together. We did not do good things. We spent 30 lifetimes balancing the karma of that one. That is how a soul evolves. We don't ever appreciate the light until we travel through the darkness. So I, I ask you to try your very best. If it is meant for you to grow and ascend, to leave the judgment, leave the victimhood, leave the projections alone, kill your ego, tame it, put duct tape on the mouth, whatever you need to do so that you can discover truth, come to terms with it because it takes some time. We have all been fed lies our entire life and go from there. It is a beautiful life that you can have and that you are meant to have if you make the choice to turn away from the chaos. That chaos is not for you. If you are on the ascension path and you're on the ascension timeline, that chaos that's playing out right now, it's not for you. It's for you to send love to all and you continue focusing on your growth. That's the test. I hope that helps you today now this next series is going to be about the divine light rays and i don't know if you've ever heard of them i know when i first encountered them i thought i knew what they were but it turns out i didn't so there's 12 individual forms of divine source light that allow the creator to experience itself as different manifestations. So we're all an extension of source through these light rays. We're able to have embody, um, take, take upon the task of growing into this aspect of source. Seven rays are related closely to the earthly plane. And then five are transcendental or heavenly rays. Now, the ones that I'm going to cover are the seven. The first one is the first ray of power, and it's associated with El Moria, Ascendant Master El Moria. The second one is the second ray of wisdom, and that is associated with Buddha. The third one is the third ray of creative intelligence, and that is associated with Archangel Shamayol. The fourth one is fourth ray of harmony, and that is associated with Archangel Gabriel. Then we have the fifth ray of intellectual knowledge associated with Archangel Raphael. Sixth ray of devotion with Archangel Uriel. And the seventh ray of ritual order and ceremony. And that is associated with Archangel Zadkiel. If you have not heard of these archangels, some of them are popular, some of them are not. I do have a document you can access it whenever you come into healing disclosures on telegram it's pinned and it is the the 72 angels guardian angels and archangels that govern them that we're born into as our guardian angels it's you're born with your guardian angel they're with you your entire life waiting for you to go i know you're my guardian angel let's chat um and they are supervised by the archangel group 
And there is a lot of information there that I never knew. So I wanted to share it with you. So that's there too, pinned at the top of the Healing Disclosures group on Telegram, which the link to, to join that is in the description of all my videos. So today, the talk is El Moria. I did um, divine light meditations for the bulk of my meditation history. And when I first did a meditation with El Moria, I got a feeling of his energy was very strong, stronger than other ascendant masters that I had encountered to that point. To that point, the only one that had done that sort of energy reaction was Serapis Bay. And it was powerful. It wasn't powerful in a negative way, but it was powerful. And so I'm going to give you a little backstory on El Moria. Um, this ascendant master has, of course, in, incarnated in many different lives and is known for, for starting lots of benevolent works. And in doing so, of course, the darkness had to come along and try to take it over. So I'll try to make sense of this in a way that you can digest it. It can become a little heavy. And if that's the case, just take a pause and come back to it later or listen to it more than once because I certainly had to go through it more than once. So El Moria is a Shohan of the First Ray and Chief of the Darjeeling Council of the Great White Brotherhood. Stop your judgment. It's not what you think it is. Let's continue. El Moria represents the godly attributes of courage, certainty, power, forthrightness, self-reliance, dependability, faith, and initiative. Those are all good qualities. These virtues have served El Moria with embodiments that allowed many incarnations of powerful authority. Stop with your judgment in the authority. It's not what you think it is. Actually, some of the incarnations that we all have provide us with opportunities of being in roles of authority. And again, we're in a, we're in a polarity state where you have free will choice in all decisions. And so even those of us that soul contracted a negative polarity life, that life is weighed at the life review when that incarnation ends on what was your free will choices that you made in each moment that were significant? What did you do that was higher timeline, even though you were in a negative polarity life and vice versa? Okay. Um, Abraham was one of his incarnations, the first Hebrew, Hebrew patriarch. It was soul contracted as a positive polarity life. Melkor, one of the three wise men, was a negative polarity life because as his role as a wise man, he was hunting baby Yeshua on orders of the kings in the area. He incarnated as King Arthur, guru of the mystery school at Camelot with Merlin, positive polarity life. Thomas Beckett, Archbishop of Canterbury, it was a negative polarity life. Although may, many put archbishops up on a pedestal, many are driven by deviant acts and dark behavior. So many orbs today. St. Sergius, Russian Orthodox saint, and he started 40 monasteries in Russia, and he was a positive, that was a positive polarity life. Then later on, St. Thomas More. He was known as the man of all seasons, and that's a positive polarity life. Then later on, Akbar, the great founder of the Mughal Empire in India, negative polarity life. At the time that he was Akbar, I was also in a male form, a lieutenant in the military for the Mughal Empire, and did horrible things. And then Thomas More, Irish poet laureate, positive polarity life. 
It is believed that El Moria ascended in 1898 after working with Master Katumi. El Moria works tirelessly with St. Germain. St. Germain, again, I will remind you, is my sole grandfather on my mama's side. His work with St. Germain is to aid the world in freedom, training public servants to externalize the will of God through God government on earth. So that's why I said, hold your judgment on the authority, because our experience of authority figures is crap, right? They're all bought and paid for. They talk a good game and then they get in office by votes or by appointments and they do everything they can to make themselves and their situation better and really nothing for the people, with the exception of one that I can think of. Yeah. So in regards to the great white brotherhood, I had to catch myself because I was like, oh no, it can't be. It's meant to represent the council of light in its origin. The great white brotherhood was meant to represent the council of light, purely benevolent in alignment to source in service to source a group of mystics that remain connected post-transition of physical form. So these are energy beings that are connecting to one another in absence of the form, the matter that they came in. So they connected and they stay connected so that they are continuing to use their energy for good. Spirit and soul remain active and are aligned with the Rosicrucian's ideology, remaining in a constant state of evolution, just as energy bodies are. Ascendant Master Katumi was integral in this as well. But as with all good things, the dark has to try to come along and steal it, try to manipulate it and make it into something that was created for light. They switch it over to the dark and they invert it the dark wanted to take what was offered as a benevolent council of light named the great white brotherhood and they aligned it to darkness in 1898 the book of black magic and of pax p-a-c-t-s manipulated the text to cause dark magic nefarious acts and bolster all white as in caucasian secret societies it shouldn't surprise you because this is their playbook this is what they do they don't have any original plays and they don't need to because we have been so ignorant to what they do and googly-eyed over their their uh, appearance their financial wealth their abundance that they seem to have and the the stuff that they spew, they're very charismatic, right? Wake up, wake up. There's really not, by and large, I would say maybe 23, 25% of the secret societies do anything good. And the ones that do all have a faction of darkness within them that hide behind the protections of that secret society. And I give you the Freemasons as an example. That not every Freemason is evil. The, the, the founding rules, doctrines, policies, dogmas of the Freemasons come from the original Knights Templars who protected the sacred bloodline. Not the Knights Templars of the Crusades, because those were the ones that were traitors. And those are the ones that the church, the Vatican sent out to kill. Not those. Again, another thing that was meant for benevolence and was inverted to be dark. So don't get hung up on the fact that you have known of you know, evil beings that were a part of the great right brotherhood. I know me too, but that's not how it was in its inception. And it's, it has to be cleaned up. It is being cleaned up. That is not a part of our higher timeline, but the source of El Moria's wisdom 
came through and was represented as the Council of Light, which they termed the Great White Brotherhood. The white wasn't for skin color. The white was for the light, the light rays. So in all incarnations, El Moria interpreted government as God over men. And his concept as a true statesman is God's over men. He inspires his subjects, illuminated obedience to source creator. So that also ties in with Yeshua likes to use the term understand versus understand because he believes us to all be level side by side, shoulder to shoulder. No one is underneath the other. No one is above the other. We share life experiences side by side. It is literally his teachings that would have freed and, and, and really truly embodied power of our sovereign being within us, which is why he was hunted and all of his teachings they tried to destroy. Back to El Moria, Ascendant Master, first ray of power. The first ray of power is energy of consciousness destruction. It can be used in a healthy way to eliminate the past and allow for a fresh start. And this sounds like uh, when you do your shadow work, you break down all the old things that were built up over um, pain and trauma and negative events. And then you get down to the core of you, the light being, the love, the energy, and you start to rebuild better. The first ray also carries a frequency of leadership. It can assist you to stand in the truth of your light so that others can find their way by it. And I have a lot of soul family members that are stepping into their power now they're being asked to step into their power now and they're having to do shadow work because their entire existence that they have conscious memory of has been as a victim or as someone who was afraid to speak or had negative repercussions when they spoke and so yes it takes it takes work. It takes resolve. It takes going within and remembering who you are. But also remember, if you want to see change, change within. And you want to be the light. So be the change and be the light. It helps to strengthen your willpower so you can accomplish any task you choose. The Ascendant Master El Moria brings you his particular blessings and encourages you to believe in your own strength and takes the initiative on what matters most to you. So do you even know what matters most to you? I encounter so many beings that when they finally get to the point where they're ready to say, I'm ready to clear things. I'm ready to, to do what will help me feel better. I'm ready to do what will help me take my power back. And we begin this dialogue and I go, okay, let's define, let's define some healthy boundaries for you. And they're like, a boundaries yeah you have to stop saying yes to everything and everyone in order for you to have time and energy to heal you have to put yourself first instead of last and this is a common common thread and it's how we're basically taught to be in life so that we remain weak disempowered and feeling less than sound familiar if you are confused about which path to take or whether to continue a certain relationship, course of action, or lifestyle choice, the first ray of power will clarify matters for you, if you allow it. We encounter this too quite often, those that are ambiguous, those that have trouble making a decision, uh, those that have trouble enforcing their boundaries, they want a lot of activations and they want a lot of you know, downloads and, and messages and, and sessions, but they're not integrating the, the lessons and the power that they're supposed to from the other sessions. So you have to do the work at some point and piling activation and activation and session at, after session 
it's not fair to the client. I don't do that. I do tap the brakes at some point and go, okay, let's talk about this. Like we have to really integrate what you already have. So you have good practices in place to go forward and you're set up for success, not failure. When it moves through our lives, the first ray of power, whatever is holding us back will be removed either through circumstances that seem to be beyond our control or by our own actions based on a sudden inner knowing. And this is when you start doing your shadow work and I, it, it happened with me. You know, I, I looked around my surroundings and I, I had a completely different perspective of what I had put in my vortex 10 days after I started doing my shadow work. At the beginning, I thought I needed everything that I had I, and that I didn't have anything in excess. And after I started doing my shadow, my shadow work, I realized I was holding on to things that was not serving me. I had really bad habits I needed to take care of. I needed to stop judging. I needed to really do some growth and healing. And in the process of doing that, things fell into alignment. So alignment doesn't always look like rainbows and butterflies, I can tell you. Aligning to source and your soul path oftentimes means that people that you have known your entire life fall away from your vortex because they were in your life to teach you lessons, to get you to this point and then let you go. So we have to allow the changes, understanding and having faith that the universe knows what's best for us and we have faith to follow through. When the first ray of power is indicated, a long-term plan that may once have seemed very important to you may suddenly seem no longer relevant or that it needs to be released altogether. You may suddenly get the motivation to go do something that you've been dreaming about for a long time. Once the first ray affects your life, your inner standing of what is helpful and what is not can change overnight. And this is very true. You can go to sleep thinking that you have to have this friend in your life because you have loved her for so long and you can't imagine life without her. And you wake up and your heart has been healed and you realize that she was a crutch and it actually held you back from growing. And all of a sudden you don't feel the same way anymore and that's okay. The changes will feel very true, very freeing, and very helpful. Those people, <clears throat> dreams, and opportunities that remain in your life afterwards have survived the onslaught of divine will. And this means that the universe is confirming that they are meant to be a part of your journey at this time. There's many, many that... I would say the majority of light workers are surrounded by beings that are not in your life pla plan for forever. They're in your life for the now. And that we have to just be okay with that. You know, understanding our soul contract helps. I think that goes a very long way because a lot of people want to know why. And that answers the why. It really does. Once you know it's soul contracted, you're like, okay, that's why. Let it go. LFG it, but some get bogged down in that. And some really like the comfort, although it's not in your highest and best good that karmic beings bring to your world. So many karmic beings make life easy, almost on autopilot. So you don't have to do any work and they want you to not do work on yourself. They want you to continue to be there for them so that you don't, take your power back and you don't realize why you're here, what you're really here to do. So you have to become uncomfortable to grow. That is the truth of it. When you allow karmic relationships to fall out of your vortex, you will be rewarded by the divine, by universe will reward you and you will never see it coming because it is not, you're not doing it based on the outcome. You're doing it because it's the right thing to do. The first ray of power also relates to the matters of leadership and politics. Don't turn this off. This is not a political talk. 
Be open as to how your spiritual journey might be helpful in the world of politics, whether that be through aligning yourself with a cause that resonates deeply in your heart or through bringing a more open and discerning viewpoint into the often deceptive world of politics. Speaking your truth will be very, very helpful at this time, not only for you, but all those around you who are willing to hear you. There's this thing called a frequency mismatch. I've reshared that video a few times. Um, and, you know, people get very frustrated when the ones that they're talking to don't respond well. And they're like, why don't you hear me? Well, oftentimes it's a frequency mismatch. Your frequency is out of their range. It's like trying to get them to listen to a radio station and they're on the wrong one. They're not going to hear the message. So at, at a certain point, it is very wise to realize that you are talking to no one that cannot hear you. Stop. Save your energy. Use it somewhere else. <clears throat> when we make our own choices from a clearer place within and those around us push back, and you try to explain it and they don't hear you, that is your sign of a frequency mismatch. They may hear that message way down the road as like a mustard seed that comes back, but they're not in the frequency range now. So just let it go. If your life purpose involves either driving a meaningful political cause forward or assuming a position of leadership, some other way, <clears throat> leadership in some other way, You'll feel the truth of this and be given encouragement from Ascendant Master El Moria to trust yourself as a leader with heart-centered awareness. How many leaders do you think of that have heart-centered awareness? It's a short list. When this ray makes its way into your life, it's time to accept the loving gauntlet being thrown down by the universe and take your hands off the controls of your life. Control freaks, listen to me. You are not in control of anyone but yourself. And you have very little control over yourself if you don't do your shadow work. Let go of the white knuckle grip you think you have on life and allow your faith to guide the universe to bring to you gifts and treasures and blessings and abilities that you cannot even fathom. You can't plan it because it's not for the limited human mind to plan. Stop limiting what the universe is going to bring to you. Detach and be curious. The mind of a child. So you want to go into new experiences with the mind of a child. Ooh, this looks like fun. What does this do? Let's experiment with this. Ooh, this feels great. Oh, that doesn't feel good. I don't want to do that. You see how clear and decisive children are? Nope, mm -mm, don't like it. Don't, mm -mm, not doing it. Us, us adults could learn a thing or two. The universe will show you exactly what you need and remove what you don't if you allow it because we all have free will choice. If something or someone is no longer part of your life, it will be so that a more beautiful, truthful, and satisfying version of what you are surrendering can come into your world. So true. You have to clear out the shadows for the, make room for more light. There's no room for more light if the whole room is full of boxes and shadows. Do your shadow work. You want to anchor yourself. You want to anchor your energy and focus to your 5D self because that's the goal right now. So as we're ascending, we're merging with our 5D self in order to do that in a way that isn't so heartbreaking, in my opinion, is that you truly try to connect with your 5D self and anchor into the life there. I have done that recently over the last couple of months, and I can now handle in this existence, I can now handle the 
interaction with my 5D self and my 5D family and my 5D babies and all the things. In the beginning, I, this happens all the time. People want it all. And then they start to get little bits of it and it's too much. It's heartbreaking because you're here in this lower dimension and you want to be there in the higher dimension. But you got this space to traverse in the middle called shadow work, the journey. So you have to keep doing that. We don't want to knock you off path by, by making you depressed and sad about what you're missing out on, theoretically, in the, in the higher dimensions. You're not missing out on it. The being that is of the frequency to be there is there. You're making your way there. It's not for you yet. But anchoring that to that life is very helpful so that you don't feel untethered because we're, we're ascending out of this dimension and that can definitely make you feel untethered. Remember the universe loves you and wants only the best and the most beautiful life experience for you. Trust it as in the universe. Trust it enough to let that happen now. Earth school breaks us down so that we can rebuild with the power of the elements, the strength of source that flows through the divine and from Mother Earth, Huna Matea. The transformation that takes place is powerful and must be welcomed completely to allow the universe to bring you the positive changes. And to that, I say, as those around you make note of the changes, speak about it. It's not criminal behavior. You don't have to keep it under wraps. Be proud about the work you put into yourself. Share that because a lot of people also would benefit from that. Heal from the false limitations placed on you by the lives here. Rise above that and allow true growth. No looking back. Most of us volunteered for this. We were selected to come down here. We had a say in our soul contract. So all the things that you have felt like your entire life happened to you actually happened for you because you just, you decided it was a good idea. That's where LFG comes in. Another way LFG comes in. Most are new earth leaders. Not due to this life, but the wisdom and abilities and energy body aspects of our entire culmination of existence and experiences. The being that I am has so much wisdom and abilities on an energy body level from all of my incarnations that I chose so that I could be who I am right now in this now moment and going forward. It's all been part of the plan. When we stay heart-centered, awake and aware and willing to course correct all throughout the day, that is how we redefine who we are. If you have a lack of faith, if you feel you're not deserving, if you have a sense of a lack of worth, self-worth, fear, control issues, or your comfort is more important than your growth, these are all signs that your egoic mind is blocking your soul expansion. And this must be handled by you for you so that you can heal and do the shadow work. Calling in El Moria and reciting the following invocation does nothing unless you're ready on a soul level to allow change. And this is the invocation. I, and you will use your soul name and title if you have one, most of us do. Now accept of my own free will, the blessing and grace of the first ray of power in my life. Through unconditional love and divine mercy, I surrender my life into the loving hands of the universe. In order to align me with the higher will and the most beautiful expression of my life journey, I call upon the loving assistance of the genuine Ascendant Master, El Moria, in all aspects of this process and ask 
that the first ray of power be expressed in all ways that serve the greatest good on this planet and that all beings may walk their true divine path through divine grace, so be it. If any of this really, really piques your interest or are you very much resonating with El Moria and those gifts and those abilities and those teachings, I invite you to pop on over to violetlotusenergy.com and check out our services. The first thing you should sign up for is a QET session to get clear. And then we can assist you to take your path and journey to develop your communication and your abilities so that you can talk to your ascendant masters, your guardian angels, your archangels, and your spirit guides. I hope you find this message comforting, uplifting, and loving in trying times. I see you again next time. Bye.